Let's come back for the rest of this. A new car just got delivered. We're gonna be testing the new Range Rover. I'll make a separate vlog on this about the Range Rover tomorrow, but for now, we're just gonna continue the vlog yesterday because uh, everything changed, schedule changed. And here it is. This is the diesel variant. It's a beautiful color. We'll get more beauty shots later, but for now, let's get in the car and go for a drive. We're gonna head down to Classic Speed today so that we can drop off some parts and check on some cars. We have a buyer for the red GT40, so hopefully they are happy with the car. Good morning, Range Rover. Analog volume knob, love that. Smell of premium leather, love that. This is the diesel version, so gotta make sure when we gas up, it's diesel, but then again, it's probably gonna last us for ages. Two spokes for the steering. The two spoke steering wheel looks good. The steering is very light. Look, one finger to turn the steering wheel on these huge, I think 20s or 22. We'll confirm all that later. Let's go for a drive. Oh, even the graphic moves. Look at that. Now that's the color I ordered. It's the gold, the Tumbi gold. The ride of this thing is extremely good. It feels like I'm sitting on a temper pedic sofa nestled in a floating cloud. It is insane. And another thing, it is insanely quiet in the cabin. Obviously we have the music off and I don't know if the noise cancelling system is in this headrest, but I know in the autobiography they have the noise cancelling system in the headrest. Now even if this doesn't have the noise cancelling, I don't think it does. It is so good, it's so quiet. Just makes me want to plan some road trips because the car is just such a capable SUV for traveling long distances. Now the diesel variant seems like it's going to be the most sought after version of this car. The power is ample already for a normal family. Now obviously I ended up going with the V8 twin turbocharged engine. I'm not quite sure why the full-size Range Rover got the twin turbo engine and then that the Defender that I got got the supercharger. So I gotta ask Land Rover why that's the case for both variants because so, normally they will recycle the engine to use in both versions but yeah they changed it so quite curious to know what happened there. And as I was driving I figured out how to turn on the Apple CarPlay so we have the Apple CarPlay in the center touchscreen. Now the center touchscreen has haptic feedback which I really didn't get to test when we were in Rockwell but testing it now and feeling it while we're using the car just makes so much sense. The Defender actually doesn't have the haptic feedback yet. I know the monitor on this seems a little bigger also than the Defender. I actually want to compare the size of them all. Now we also have a wireless charging port hidden nestled all the way deep inside because I thought I forgot the cable so I'm not gonna be able to charge my phone but I did see the wireless charging emblem nestled all the way in I will video that later but pretty useful now the sound system is superb it just makes me want to listen to the music louder and louder because it sounds so good it has the clarity the bass and the mids which fill in the cabin and because the car is so quiet already or the SUV is so quiet already it just makes it feel like you're in a concert hall one of my favorite features is the analog volume button. I keep talking about this, but it just makes more sense when I need to rush up the volume, it's easy, and I need to put it down, it's also easy. I really hate it when the manufacturers use a push button to lower the volume because that means you have to rapidly press everything just to get the volume up or just to get the volume down. Almost at the car shop, gonna pass by there later too our expansion area for our painting so we're reorganizing the car shop and gonna check for updates huge yes r22 kahit 22 the ride is so good the buyer just left looking at the red gt40 i'm gonna do some shop rounds first and then i'll pick up the camera again these are the mags for the evo which we're gonna bring down to raleigh so i have to load the mags later kailangan sapinin natin para hindi magasgas we will get my bat on 
and try it out the button. Fold the seats down. How awesome is that? Okay, and then leave it open first so we can load the mags. Okay, let's do some shop updates. So from the last build video of the GT40 with the Martini livery, we haven't been able to do anything, but the team has basically taken the car apart. We are trying to fit an electronic power steering into the under dash, which we're actually gonna discuss after lunch. And also we're trying to see how we can add a hydrovac so that we can get a softer braking kit. After that, we are also going to finish the paint of the car. So when I left, the team basically removed the original side sill and was able to fit the carbon piece much better and it wasn't even rubbing on the door anymore because I thought we had to shave the door down so that we can fit it. So far, the kit is fitting really well. I can't wait to paint everything into the new livery. Uh, we will try to add a pin here for the lock so that we can be safe. This needs to be re-threaded. That's why you have the knockoffs here and then you have the wheel lock spacers on the back or the center lock spacers on the back. Now, the three 56 over here we're waiting for the parts to get chromed from Germany and that's going to take another while I've been following up with 2233 and they haven't given me any updates on that I really love how the fender vents turned out can't wait to see this completed as we're warming up my lunch we're gonna go outside and update again so the buyer loved the red GT40, it's just that he doesn't like the price. So I told him I can't lower the price because this is a very limited edition car and it's very hard to get. So firm on that. This one, we are doing final detail work so we can show it to the prospective buyer next week. This is Jed's Charger, which is getting a full down makeover and restoration. This car is almost done. This is a 67 and very unique color. I like it. But I do love this candy red. It's like a deep candy red. It's not shined yet, so um, doesn't look so sparkly. But when this is detailed, it's going to look so good. Now, Sky Firo. Sky Firo is almost done. The alternator is finally in. The wiring is finally set. We just need to finish some minor details so Kyle and the air suspension team can come back and do the kit. But basically, this car is almost ready. We're gonna have a drift car finally and we can rock it properly without damaging the other cars. Now, the charger had to be repainted because there were some defects in the paint that I wasn't happy about. I'm now looking at ordering other wheels also because these wheels for me don't really do it, especially the offset of the front wheels over here. Over here, the black GT40 Mark II Edition. This one is just parked because we have no time to work on it yet. Whatever we're learning from the other GT40s is what we are improving before we get to the last car. Now, over here is a client's car. Look how full this engine bay is. It is literally the whole compartment. Now, the engine is a Coyote engine from Roush along with a supercharger. It actually sticks out of the hood just a little so we had to modify the hood so that we can fit it under the cowl. Now, as you can see, this one doesn't even have the struts already inside, it's outside. And still, it is very tight. Now, the supercharged motors have a reverse alternator. The alternator is facing this way. But this car also being finished up so that we can batten it down and test it soon. C6 Corvette on hold, uh, waiting for another tester i'm gonna get a quick update on this because i want to know what's happening and that's about it some over here we have our new mustang rear end this is a 65 rear end that we're assembling and let's go over to the other side not much work here in fabrication we are i guess yeah we're finished with some of the work i, I think the mach one of my friend is gone um we have put the c2 chassis on some wheels we are finishing some sofas over there sofa over here and then the r33 we're just waiting for parts i'm gonna get some updates on that also but this is the cars here and the denting side so this is a 1967 build that we've done this is a very very old build from the old classic speed shop in Clark Angeles City. And now I met the owner recently when we were doing the RX-7 build. So he's going to basically ask me to make sure the car is streetable. He wasn't so happy with uh, how it was driving. So it's here to basically get a full checkup. This car is a beautiful spec. 
these are the fender signal lights for the F430. I'm going to use them as signal lights for the GT40. I think they're gonna work because the shape is very classic. Anyway, we're gonna go to the other warehouse to update you guys with the cars on the other side. We are restoring this MRS, but lots of work needed to be done. I'm very particular about gapping and whoever did the kit for this car disregarded the gapping. It's closed here, it's far here, it's open and wide, and then it's closed again. So definitely before we even touch the paint we're gonna finish the gapping and fix the alignment of everything we want to make sure the alignment works well when you mount the taillights when you mount the panels that it's all flush and seamless together rather than one's floating one is off you know basic things like this where you can see the shape of the fender there's a dip here and then there's a straight edge here before it gets round so stuff like that we will fix the gapping also is very different and I'm not a big fan of that we want to make sure all the lines that uh, are seen on the car are very very clean so front bumper also weighs like a rock oh my god okay yes definitely that's a plug if you guys don't know what a plug is a plug is the raw product before you need to mold it so that's how you shape the product and then you mold it so you get a final piece which is super light this is our new paint area and it looks so good okay it's time to wrap up here and finally get back in the Range Rover and we're going to load the mag so that we can drop it off and visit the Evo 5 and find out what's happening with the rally car so let's load the Range Rover and get on our way Bye bye. Thank you. So the mags behind me are gonna go to the driver later this afternoon and hopefully he can drop it off and we will update with the Evo next time change of plans again so sorry about that so we're just gonna load the m4 this afternoon around 4 p.m and then after that i think we can wrap the vlog up and just in case you're wondering these are 17 inch mags and there are four pieces behind there so you can see there's a lot of luggage room in the back of the range rover we didn't even need to fold the seats down technically but i just did it so that i don't leave any imprints of the carpet or scratch any of these surfaces as you can see also we put cardboard everywhere so i'm trying to be super careful this is not my car i think technically on the disclaimer i'm not supposed to haul stuff with it that are not people related so sorry range rover back in the city 33 minutes let's do this we have arrived in the condo Super comfortable, locking the car. We're gonna leave this car first real quick, grab the keys to the M4, and then come back down. Such a beautiful shape. Tow truck finally arrived. We are gonna load the M4. The M4 needs to go back to the farm because we ended up selling the wheels and we are gonna do a wide body kit for this. and loaded see this car on the farm tomorrow handbrake up in gear it is another day and i decided to continue the vlog from yesterday's vlog and the other day's vlog because i don't feel like the storyline is good enough so we are getting back into the 2022 range rover to head to the farm we have a lot of shuffling and parts to mix up and bring down and then after that we're just gonna head back down the city hopefully we can get some beauty shots of the Range Rover and then Joey can give her first impressions of what she thinks of this new SUV Caught up to the BMW M4. We are gonna pass them because they are slow, but that wrap is so gorgeous. Thank you so much to Second Skin. We're finally at the farm, and I wanted to ambush Joe and ask what was her first impressions of the Range Rover. Safety. Safety. It's going to be a smooth, safe, elegant, exquisite, business class style ride. <laughs> That's you... what I thought. Do you feel like it's really comfortable, more comfortable than our old Range Rover? 
Well, it's new, so it has that newness feel about everything. But it reminds me so much of what we had before. It still has the foundations of what Range Rover provides you, but this is more spacious. Oh yeah, I think it's it, definitely a lot more roomier. It's way bigger. Um, what do you think about the quietness of the cabin? It's relaxing. Yes, the absolute silence. Yeah. Well, isn't that part of the beauty of cars as such to provide luxury of being able to listen to your own thoughts instead of dealing with outside noise? Exactly. I think um, one of the key highlights for the Range Rover is the detachment from the real world. Yeah, it's like you are in your own sphere. The Range Rover bubble is amazing. Anyway, I'll update you guys again once we are in the farm. The M4 has to get unloaded. The 993 C4S arrived last night and then we have two more cars arriving this afternoon. Lots of work to be done and... Now, honey. Papa service could happen before, but. Oi! Oi! Papa! What is that? 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 One car parked, park the Range Rover next. Hello my babies, hello my babies. Some parts have arrived, okay. Lots of car movement today, so M4 is gonna come down, park over here, uh, and then two more cars coming this afternoon, and then we're just basically gonna remove the wheels and tires of the M4 so that we can send it down to Manila. Uh, the SVJ seats need to come out. The battery needs to come off also. So we leave the keys here on the wiper. Some track stands for the M4. I love these track stands. They're aluminum and super lightweight and they don't scratch the floor. So I just need to assemble them. Get a Phillips screwdriver. Kit is off. Brought out some alpha parts. I'm gonna sell this. Some motorized plate mounts. Our seats are gonna go down. And some parts for the R32. Some Novitech parts. This needs to go back down to Manila. Some run stop parts, which Trollo is going to sell. This was ordered from me, from a friend here in Laguna. This is a Boxster headlights, Boxster daylights, Boxster soft top, and then the interior piece, if I'm not mistaken, along with HR coilovers. So we're gonna build his car here at the farm. Dirty girl. So I've had this chassis since car porn, and literally it's been sitting in. 2233 and it looks like it's missing a ton of parts already. So I'm just doing a quick rinse so that we can put it in storage. Basically, it bought it as a non-running 964 and planning to restore it. Wow!
the Benz is finally home. So cool. Okay, just moved a lot of cars today. We're gonna leave this first here. Hopefully the battery doesn't go flat on us. And just cooling it down because it's a hot interior. Let's see those color wings go up. Oh yeah. Norman is working on the McLaren. As you guys know, the McLaren's having electrical issues. So we're trying to remove the seat so that we can access the Scud. The Scud is one of the modules that is trapped behind the passenger seat. And it's being super difficult because the passenger seat module is acting up. So we're trying to jerry-rig the driver's controller module for the passenger side so that we can push the seat forward and then hopefully remove the chair. We are packing up so we can head down. We're gonna drive up, truck left already. Okay, I think that is enough of the Mega Car Update vlog because we started Monday, it's now Wednesday. Hoping you guys are satisfied with this content. I really love this thing. Tomorrow we're gonna do a continuation review from Rockwell to the road test tomorrow to Masungi and then finally we're gonna be able to release the vlog on this thing. But for now, I'll see you guys again in the next video. Peace out.